Hi guys, I'm Bree. And I'm Allie, and this is Off Script. If you think about it, books are potential scripts for movies. When this adaptation happens, typically it's disappointing because they went off script. In this series, we will be talking about how off script they went. All right. Hello. Hello. And welcome to Off Script. I'm Bree. I'm Allie. And we compare books and movies. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right oh. as you take a sip uh, yeah, of exactly. coffee. Yeah. It's like, mm, this is horrible, but <laughs> I used eggnog instead of creamer and oh my god. Ooh. Is, is, I don't like coffee, mm. but that it's also a cinnamon sugar cookie coffee. Ooh. With eggnog. And I was a little bit worried when I was deciding to do that, but mm-hmm. oh man. It's good. good. Yeah, very good. I'm glad I did that. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. We are obviously still recording in December, (laughs) so that's why we got (laughs) Christmas cookie. Well, we already told you in... Oh, I... Yeah. remember? Yeah. That we're recording the next day? Yes. So it's the next day for us. You guys, it's like the week of Christmas, technically, for us. Yes, it is. That's craziness. (laughs) I realized... December flew by. Yes. I realized for you guys, you're like... It's February, guys. (laughs) It's it's like the the end of February. (laughs) That's weird to think about when this comes out. It'll be two months into... 2023 you <laughs> guys we're really close to twilight and i cannot wait literally the next book we are reading yeah next podcast coming out next week oh shit <laughs> <laughs> we have one more we have to record the lucky one still so it doesn't seem like it but uh <laughs> Yeah, to you guys. My brain, I'm stuck on the lucky one, so I was not prepared for that. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Uh, All right, you guys. So today we're doing Message in a Bottle. We are on season two, episode nine. And yeah, I guess our picture is that I'm drinking eggnog coffee. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas week and we're about to get a crazy snowstorm, apparently. I know. I'm super excited. I pre hates the snow. I love I the snow. I do. I'm not happy. Oh, my parents aren't letting me go see my movie tomorrow. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Uh, and then I just hope my flight out. Oh, yeah. Doesn't get screwed. Like, if I had nowhere to go, great. Do it. Snow all you want. But the fact that I have things planned, I'm like, that's fair. Really? You can do this some other time? Fair. I know. Wouldn't that be cool if when this comes out? In February, we're supposed to get a snowstorm that week, too. So people are like, oh, yeah, we are supposed to get a snowstorm. Except for all the people who listen to us who are in England and <laughs> <laughs> everywhere else. Yeah. We're like, what are you talking about? Uh, Over here in the States. <laughs> Washington specifically. Yeah. It's pretty gross outside right now. It's like it's been foggy, like, gray. It's weird. been lightly snowing all day. Like teeny tiny flakes all day. I've been inside all day, so I wouldn't know. I took... Tyler to gymnastics and then Riley had a dentist appointment so I've been like go 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 and I was like oh my gosh like literally like his gymnastics ended at 11 it takes about 15 minutes to get home I had to grab Riley run to the dentist appointment which was took 15 minutes to get to and it was like perfect timing yeah and then I was like oh my gosh and they like do like gas she got sealants today yeah I didn't, don't know if I've ever gotten gas. I've had, I've heard some people get gas. I don't know. I wonder My cousins if it's, don't like it. I wonder if it's for kids because they freak out. Because mm-hmm. the way she described it, she's like, this is going to help you breathe better. So I'm wondering if like, she, That's so exactly she doesn't why. hyperventilate. Because like, a shot or gas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I've I always wanted to try it. I You've never had laughing gas before? No. Is laughing gas also, like, if you get enough of it, it knocks you out? Is that what laughing gas is? Or it just, like, think chills so. you out? I think it just chills you out and, like, I don't know. Because I've been anesthesiated with Me too, gas but not before. with gas. Mine's always been through an IV. With Tyler, with my C-section, I had to be knocked out so quickly. Mm-hmm. They had to do gas. So, like, the oh. IV wouldn't have gone quick enough. So they're like, just count to 10 or count back from 10. <laughs> and then I woke up and he was here. <laughs> You're like, wow, easy. That was nice. Yeah. 
But anyways, okay, we got on a whole tangent okay, there. Say, there's your whole picture for <laughs> Yes. That. All right. So, let me do your synopsis. Yes. So, during her morning jog on the beach, journalist Teresa Osborne discovered a bottle protruding from the sand. Inside, she finds a heartbreaking anonymous love letter. After her paper publishes the letter, Teresa tracks down the letter's author, world-weary widower. What the heck? (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Google. What are you doing? In the Carolinas. But Teresa finds herself falling hopelessly in love with uh, Garrett. She becomes racked with guilt over the over her visits. And I'm like <laughs> I like what? that you skipped that. <laughs> well, I'm just like uh, this this I, after reading this out loud, I realize this is movie synopsis more than book synopsis. I try yeah. when I do this. So you guys, with this one, we recorded last night and I hadn't f- and watched the movie last night. So we recorded until like 1:30 in the morning. I went home yeah. and passed out. <laughs> then I wake up and I just explained my busy day to you. So I hadn't finished typing up all my notes yet. Yeah. So usually when I type it up, I go back and I like edit the synopsis to match book and movie. Yeah. And I couldn't do that. So let's see how well that goes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Our author is Nicholas Sparks, director Louis Mandoki. Screenplay writer Gerald D. Pagel. Leave it to all men to do this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guys, I'm so angry. <gasps> <laughs> this book was something else. <laughs> yeah. So the book came out April 1st, 1998. The movie, February 12th. Oh, it was the Valentine's Day movie. 1999. And it, that's only a one year difference. That's crazy. Yeah. They're just like automatically Especially- like, yes. I wanted to know what his first book That's, hey, to hold, movie was. Hold on. Oh. Wait till we get to my super fun facts. Okay. <laughs> it was this one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but that's even more impressive that it took only a year. I know. For it being his first one? Yeah. Yeah. And then all the other ones take forever. <laughs> right? Man. Way to go right. on a limb. <laughs> yeah. Right? We need to make a bad first choice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> So what did you do first? Read it or see it? I read it. And apparently I read it a long time ago, too. <laughs> Explain. Uh, I picked this book. I'm going to jump to the why did we pick this book. Okay, we'll do that right there. Why <laughs> did we pick this book? Uh, I picked this book because when we chose to do Nicholas Sparks, the other ones that we had picked were ones that we had already seen the movie for. I was like, I want to go into one with us having not read or seen the movie yet. <laughs> so I picked this one because I was like, I don't even think I've heard of this one. Let's do it. <laughs> so then I'm reading and reading and like the story seems kind of familiar, but I'm also like, it was pretty uh, predictable. Yes. And so I just assumed that that was why it felt familiar. But then I got to the end and literally like the very last thing that happens right from one pivotal moment, I was like, oh, and then this happens and then he says this and then this gets said and this gets brought up. And I was like, hold on. How do I know all this? I'm pretty sure I've read this book before. (laughs) So let that sink in. She didn't realize she read this book until the very end. So if that doesn't tell you what type of book this is, I don't know what will. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, when I realized that I had read it and I had forgotten it, I was like, oh, damn, I'm so upset that we read this <laughs> uh, Well, I haven't, I hadn't read or seen it, so I read it first. So let's see if we like the book better. Gosh, I, we just realized we have to decide. <laughs> Like both of our faces went, oh crap. <laughs> I was about to be like, yeah, let's see. And I was like, oh, wait, let's see what we will decide at the end of this podcast, apparently. Oh, crud. As we debate and talk. Well, you've kind of heard about it. What are our initial thoughts of the plot overall? 
I had high hopes. I, if the book went a different way, if the story in general just went a different way, I think it would have been better. Like I told you when we watched it, I wish that the story was her writing an article about him and his story, not, oh, I found these love, or these love letters, I guess. And now I'm madly in love and I got to go and find him. Yeah. <laughs> that because it just felt creepy to me <laughs> it was yeah it was weird like it was just it's weird to think because i just was re-listening to our notebook podcast yeah that you had said how in his interview at nau that he always bases the books on someone so that means he possibly did know a widower or a widow and he just wrote he horribly. He wrote it so bad. That's where I'm upset about. It's because I'm like, it seems like he's never met someone who's lost their person. Not even just their person, just someone in general. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was like, ah. Uh, so I did that's not funny. like it. I didn't it. even think about that. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Isn't that Unless he knows a stalker. <laughs> right? That Maybe that's what he wrote it about. Someone stalking <laughs> someone. I just didn't like the plot at all so yeah i'm upset that i have to choose <laughs> which one i like best. Mm, no that's just <laughs> yeah gonna be fun for super. us super all right okay okay so, so we already did why we picked it so let's dive into Ali super fun facts. unfortunately there's not a lot of fun facts about this probably because it's not a very fun movie <laughs> <laughs> but i tried for you guys i got my five so as Brie already spoiled, this is the first Nicholas Sparks movie adaptation. And I believe A Walk to Remember was the second one. Message in a Bottle, A Walk to Remember, The Notebook, Knights of Rod- Rodanthe. Rodanthe. De- Rodanthe. <laughs> Dear John, Last Song, Lucky One, Safe Haven, Best of Me, Longest Ride, and The Choice. Oh god, that has me nervous for the last song. None of them have matched. No. Yeah. So, no, this is going to be fun. Dude, they're all, they all suck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I'm realizing, too, because when I went into this, I thought this had Richard Gere in it. Oh. But that's Night and Rodanthe. Oh. So, we know which one I wanted to do. <laughs> eh, maybe next time. <laughs> We're never doing it all Nicholas Sparks no, month again. No. We will do I his think books. maybe two yeah, we'll in s- February, but we'll still do his I books, cannot but not do not. four. No, my gosh. Uh, his writing is so... It felt like the same book over and over and over, except for The Notebook. The Notebook was the only one that wasn't written. So it was a walk to remember. Okay. <laughs> so two. Two books feel like the same damn thing over and over again. <laughs> Well, the, the lucky one in this one kind of sort of do have the same plot. That's true. We, yeah. But that's horrible. Why did we do that? You did it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Zac Efron and one that we hadn't done before. Okay. Read or seen before. Fair. All right. Fun fact number two. So the painting in Catherine's studio that his dad carries out during their huge fight mm-hmm. is... Girl with Lantern by an American Impressionist painter, Helen Maria Turner. So it's a real painter. Oh. Painting. Yeah. That's what I thought was most shocking. That's it, weird. What? It, what? It was produced in 1904, and it's in the museum art, the Greenville Museum of Art in Greenville, South Carolina. Oh, wow. But it's like, why would they use why a Why would real... they use a famous painting? Right. That's weird. That's what I thought was weird, too. That's why I chose that one. (laughs) Okay. Number three. Over $250,000 of renovation were done to Garrett's home, including adding on Catherine's art room. At the end of the movie, the owner of the house demanded it be restored to its original, (gasps) which cost just about the same. <laughs> like, that sucks. They're probably like, wow, this guy's gonna love all of these changes. I know. He's just gonna love it. You're welcome. He's like, no, put it back. <laughs> okay, those were really the fun facts, and now I got some continuity issues. Let's do it. Okay. So when Teresa and Garrett are at Garrett's house for the steak dinner, he offers to pour her a glass of wine. 
which she accepts and then begins to walk around the house empty handed. And all of a sudden, she has a glass of wine in her hands. <laughs> <laughs> and number five, when Garrett is typing the last letter to Catherine to tell her about Teresa, the first word he types is it. But when they do the voiceover for the reading, they first say my. Like I said, guys, I'm sorry. There were not a lot of fun facts for this one. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Let's do it. So the book uh, kicks off by just, I don't really remember if this is part of the story or it's just like a prologue or what. It's just explaining why messages in a bottle are so, like, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, sometimes they're used for shipwrecks and sometimes they're used to study the tides and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, is this important to the story? <laughs> and it was not. So, uh, Kind of. Like when he explains like how he goes out and chooses where he throws it. I guess. But he could have explained that in the story. Uh, I didn't true. need a whole chapter explaining it. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Cause I've always been fascinated by messages in a bottle. That's true. <laughs> so Fair. Fair for you. <laughs> uh, all right. So, it starts off with Teresa running on a beach. And we find out her background. She's divorced. She has a 12-year-old. They've been divorced for three years now because he cheated on her. And But they get along fine. It's like a amicable divorce. He's married now with another kid. And um, she writes columns in a newspaper. And so, right now, it's summertime. And her husband has... Kevin, which is her son. Mm -hmm. So she's like on vacation. Mm -hmm. And as she's running, she kind of just chills out for a little bit. And she's like watching this guy on the beach. And she's just like, I wish I was carefree like he is because he's just standing in the water. So she kind of stands up to go try it. And then she sees a bottle. And she's like, I'm going to do my good deed and go throw this bottle away. <laughs> and then she notices there's a message in it. And she opens it. And she sees that it was from three weeks ago and it was a lost love letter. Someone named Garrett who really misses this woman named Catherine. And she just starts crying when she's reading it. Which I thought was so weird. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I get moved by things, but like, I read that letter and I didn't cry. Right. Because <laughs> you knew it was fake. I wonder if you read it and if it was like a real it letter. It was an actual letter that I found. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and so she went and go showed it to her friend Deanna and Deanna's like you know what you should put this as a column in your newspaper and she's like I write about kids and families like and advice and yeah this is not what I do but she goes and she thinks about it. not okay. what happens <laughs> no first off well I mean I mean it's close but it's yeah changing. yeah it starts and you see Teresa dropping her kid Jason off. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why change names? <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. I, I'm pretty uh, sure her ex's name stayed David. But <laughs> I have no idea. But it's like, why? It was Nicholas yeah. Sparks' first movie. He couldn't, he was like too He nervous. probably didn't have like, yeah, the Dude. gumption to be like, you can't change that. You right. can't change that. He was just like, yes, make my book into a movie. Right. Anyways, so it looks like she flew to meet her ex yeah which was weird because they live in the same no they don't oh they he lives in california oh but it never says that yeah. she flew no she usually sent him on his own so she flies drops him off to her ex his wife and their new baby and is like i'm gonna be gone here's the number where you can reach me and then she goes to this the beach town and where I think it was Cape Cod. Sure. It didn't <laughs> say in the movie. <laughs> no, it didn't in the movie. Uh, it almost looked like where Garrett lives. It did. So then she's at this beach town and she does go on runs. Well, first she's at like, it looks like a hotel, which in the book, she's at her friend's timeshare place. So it's just her and her friend and her friend's husband. Whereas in the movie... It's her and like 30 other people. And, and they, I don't think her friend is even there. 
no no her friend's not there it's yeah. basically like the owner of the hotel that she's talking to that's like mm-hmm. uh there's that cute oh, guy yeah. over there yeah yeah because a guy was apparently checking Teresa out and Teresa's like nah I'm good I'm gonna go on a run and not deal with him because the owner was trying to set him up yeah so she goes on a run and there's no carefree dude standing in the ocean instead she just like kind of slows down because she's tired from running and she finds a bottle sticking up and so she opens it and she reads it did she cry I think she just had a look of like (gasps) on her face and then she flew back home yep would if you found a bottle yeah would you open it and read the letter yeah yeah I would too (laughs) so my uh brother-in-law and sister-in-law that's how my brother-in-law proposed to Cute. my sister-in-law yeah so i was always like nerd so cameron and i were like scoping out so we could get it on video and take yeah. pictures yeah. and so and also so we could make sure no one opened Took the, the bottle. bottle and because yeah i always think of that i'm like oh. what if someone planted it? right <laughs> yeah. and then so then like when we he did my amazing race birthday yeah. Someone opened one of my letters, and he was watching. And he called me. He's like, "What? Those people right there just opened your letter!" And I had to run over and like <laughs> take the letter from them. So after stuff like that, I'm always like, "Oh, would I do it?" But I think my curiosity would. Oh, make, I would for sure. Yeah, it would make me do it. <laughs> uh, I also realized the letters didn't talk about this. Oh yeah, no. In the book, they are handwritten letters. In the movie, they're tight oh i'm so mad so because like that's supposed to add to the sincerity of it is he sits mm-hmm. down and writes out his thoughts mm-hmm. instead he's sitting there like click 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 because he's the freaking slowest typer in the history yeah. of the world we don't see him typing until the very end of the movie but, but yes oh my gosh yes. i was like mm, you're going quite slow on that <laughs> <laughs> oh the other thing is just the fact that the let oh my god I wish I could remember the line from the letter but in the book it's this like beautifully written thing and it actually like because Nicholas Sparks wrote it it sounds like it's coming from an author right it's like a true love letter that yeah makes you feel something in your heart yep then you're watching the movie and they are not authors the screenwriters (laughs) yeah (laughs) There, there was this one line where it said something like for you are home and I need to find home or something. It was just so bad. It was like, why wouldn't you just copy paste? Oh, wait, no. For I am not home unless I am with you where you are home. It was so bad. It was like, uh, yeah. And then it was also signed G, not Garrett. Yes. So that's important because now in the book, we're still at the we're still at the timeshare. So she's like, I'm gonna think about it, and she thinks about it for a little bit, and then her and her friend Deanna go vacationing, and like they go shopping and all this sort of stuff. And then Deanna was talking to Teresa about if she's met anyone and her ideal man, and we're just finding out more about how Teresa is like sad. She's alone, but. You know, it's hard to date after you've been divorced and all this sort of stuff. I was about to say same girl, and then you said that a little bit, and I was like, oh, I can't say that. You now. cannot. <laughs> <laughs> so once they got back to the house, Teresa then agreed to submit the letter under the circumstance that she takes out the names because they have Garrett and Catherine in there, and that she writes a little intro explaining that this is not her work, and they take out the location where it's at, too. And so they fax it in. That sure is dating the, <laughs> the, the book a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she gets back to the office and the receptionist, she tells her receptionist, hold all the calls. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just need to get some work done. And her desk is full of fan mail about this letter. Mm-hmm. And the receptionist calls in and she's like, you know what? I can't hold this one person. She keeps calling back. So she's like, oh, fine. So she answers it and we find out that this woman found a letter from Garrett also. She's like, was this person's name Garrett in your 
letter that you found and was he writing to Catherine and she's like yes and so she had her send her a copy and sure enough it was another letter from the same person just written three years ago instead of um three weeks ago yes in the movie she never wants the letter published she just is adamant about no this is personal this is not our place to do this we're not doing this her boss aka Hagrid wow what? Hagrid <laughs> you said it like grrp <laughs> Hagrid <laughs> Hagrid <laughs> oh goodness um so he decides that he's publishing it and so he puts it in the paper and like he gives Teresa credit for finding it but it's like we're publishing it <laughs> yeah so she was upset about that but then just like in the book she gets all this crazy fan mail and it's like piled up in heaps and heaps and so her and two of her colleagues go into a room and are reading the fan mail which is kind of cute I liked re- getting to hear some of the fan yeah. mail but this is when <laughs> a letter has come in that says I have or wait she even put it in the letter it was like hey I have another letter for you yeah she here it is and there's a second letter from Garrett to Catherine yep so a few days later she now discovers in the book another letter she was researching messages in a bottle message messages (laughs) in a bottle and Hager (laughs) (laughs) we're doing great for you guys today we slept so well (laughs) And Teresa then calls this author and she makes up this lie about how, you know, she's writing a paper on messages in a bottle and she needs a copy of that letter and everything. She's like, I'll pay you $300 and we'll quote you in the paper. I thought this was stupid. I was like, what? Wouldn't he then want to read this article? You would think. Yeah, I thought it was dumb too. So he agreed and sent it over. And sure enough, this was a third letter from Garrett. Garrett. In the freaking movie though... They, she finds a third letter who she assumes it's from Garrett but it doesn't say Dear Catherine on it. No. We'll it find out more about that later. later. But she just assumes. She's like, it was on the same typewriter and it is and the same, same paper. paper. It's the same person. <laughs> but anyways, we'll get there. <sighs> that happens like at the Spoiler-ish. end of the movie. Spoiler-ish. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I just had to compare. Uh, and so um Teresa then shows Deanna the two new letters that she's found. So a total of three. And Deanna starts doing research. And she, like, makes some phone calls. She's like, okay, you know. So she finds out. She takes clues out of each letter. Like, Mm -hmm. he talks about scuba He talks about sailing. Sailing. The happenstance, which is his boat. He talks about, like, he mentions a place. So they kind of narrow down where. And so all of this sort of stuff. And within 20 minutes and a couple they find phone calls Garrett. they find out his name is Garrett Blake and he lives in North Carolina right North yeah. Carolina yeah and she made Teresa get on a plane to go find him yes this does not happen in the movie ish no i hate how they did it in the movie yeah in the movie Teresa just goes and does all the research herself and she starts like hardcore researching she gets to someone who knows about typewriters and so this is why we end up having it typed out rather than written because since it's only signed G we have no name to go off of and Teresa's kind of an idiot and also the letters are so horribly written they don't have any clues in them so she's going based off of the typewriter that gets used and all this and it takes like it felt like a week two weeks yeah before she found him time yeah rather than the 20 minutes and so then once she finds him she herself is like all right i'm gonna go well actually she had some pushback from her boss her boss was like i think this is a dumb idea do you really think there's a story here she's like yeah i do when really she just wanted to go find the man right I liked in the book better where she didn't want to go. 
Yeah. It made more sense. Yeah. She's like, no, you know, that's like awkward. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to do that. And her yeah. friend's like, no, you got to do it. Go do it. Go do it. And so she was like made to go do it. Yeah. And. But then I ate spur after that. That was the last time she ever put up a like. Fight. I shouldn't do this. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> All right, so Teresa found the scuba shop where Garrett works, and she went and looked around. And as she's looking around, she finds a news article with his picture on it, and she was relieved to find out he was her age because she didn't know how old he was. She was like, "Well, yeah. I'm going down. You know, he could be super old, like, and then that'll or be that. super young, or super young." And so he looked around thirty, which is what their age was, and um. One of the shop workers asks if he could help her, and she's like, oh, I'm just browsing, but can I speak to Garrett? And uh, he's like, oh, he's not here right now, but he's down at the docks. And so she ends up going down to the docks to find where he is, and she's looking at the happenstance, which is the boat that he fixed up, and then, but he's not there. Yeah. In the movie, she goes and finds (laughs) his house. Yes. What the heck? And his dad is on the porch and is like, how can I help you? And she's like, oh, I'm just admiring the house. And did she ask about Garrett? She didn't ask. No. He said, because she wants to take a picture of the house. He's like, I can't tell you that because it's not my house. It's my son's house. Yep. And so then she ends up going down to the docks. And she has this awkward run-in with a dude who she's assuming is Garrett. But it's not Garrett. It was weird. Yeah. Like, well, it's a whole pointless <laughs> scene. Yeah, it was. Uh, but basically, she is talking to the guy and then asks a specific question that Garrett would know. And he was like, oh, I don't know that, but Garrett would. And he was down over this way. So she goes down to this boat that Garrett is working on. And it's not the hamp- Hampton stands. <laughs> yep. We're doing great. <laughs> It's not the happenstance. It's someone else's boat he's fixing up. And so she's like sitting there asking r- weird questions and he is brushing her off. But then also when they end up taking it out sailing the next day, he's taking someone else's boat out sailing with a different person. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah. And then this whole entire scene is basically Teresa's just fishing for a date. And that's not at all how she does it in the book. In the book, she's very much like... If he's going to ask me, I'll go for it. But if he doesn't ask me, I'm not going to push him into this. Yeah. Like, at the start of the book, she does great. She's understanding. But then once they start going, then it gets bad. (laughs) Exactly. Okay. So then... Yep, that was it. (laughs) (laughs) So then at this point, you'll have to tell me. Yes. Because, okay, this was, you know, as a not avid reader. Yeah. This is the first book I've read where there are two characters (laughs) that you get inner monologue from Mm -hmm. like there's not a single like in harry potter you only Mm -hmm. get harry's thoughts ever Mm -hmm. so it would flip between Mm -hmm. but it wasn't like cujo or whatever where each chapter it focused on a different person it was like within the same section yeah is it is that like a normal thing in like books Yes and no. Okay, it seemed very um, awkward at first, but then it started flowing. So I didn't know if it was like just because I've never dealt with it before. I think most times when you have a dual, what is it called, dual narrative? Uh-huh. I think whatever. When you're going between two characters, usually it's each chapter. Yeah. You get your own thing. I've had a few books do it, like How Message in a Bottle did it. It's not my favorite. I also just hate, like, it was also third person, too. Yeah. Which then makes it even harder to do how he was doing the inner monologue. Yeah. Because it wasn't like it was in quotations. It was almost like he wanted to write it first person, but wrote it third person. And then when the thoughts came through, they came through as first person. It was in- It was odd. Yeah. It was rough. Okay. Okay. Just it was rough sure. for me, too. Okay. Just making sure. Okay, so she, as I left off in the book. That's probably why I freaking forgot about it. Forgot about what? The book. I bet I hated how it was told, like the narrative. Yeah. Because it was just too, I felt like too much was going on. Yeah. I almost also wanted it. I liked Garrett. 
I liked the character of Garrett. I wanted to uh-huh. be with him longer than Teresa. Uh-huh. I agree. Book. I agree. All right, so we left off where Teresa's like looking at happenstance, and then all of a sudden Garrett comes up on her, and he's like, you know, asking her like you know, what are you doing and stuff? And she was like, oh, I just saw the article in the shop about this and I just want to come check it out and everything like that. And she was like, I've never been sailing before. Did she say that? Or they somehow they got in a, like a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she's never been sailing before comes up and he asks her to to come. Yeah. He's like, I'm taking her out at seven tonight. You know, if you want to come. And, then it jumps to his inner monologue, and he's like, oh, my gosh, what did I just do? Like, why did I want to do th-? Like, he's sort of regretting it, but not at the same He's having mm-hmm. an internal battle with mm-hmm. himself. Because by this point, we did find out, based on some of the other letters, that he is a widower. A widower. Yeah. And so, um, of course, Teresa is like, oh, yes, yeah, like, very excited, like, I'll be there type of thing. So she mm-hmm. goes and gets sandwiches and everything like that, and then comes back. Um, at seven. And so then we're focused on Garrett for a little while. And they, with Garrett's stories, they do kind of flashbacks sometimes about yeah. him and Catherine. <laughs> and so we find out, you guys, oh, I forgot to mention. <laughs> the way he wrote his letters really reminded me of Heathcliff and oh, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> and it very well could have been also because her name was Catherine. But it was just like, it was like, old timey writing and it was like it wasn't old timey writing but it felt like that like it just <laughs> felt very Withering Heights to me <laughs> and which then, is hilarious because the person who loves Withering Heights did not make that connection but then in the movie <laughs> hey, jump, <laughs> jumping way back yeah uh, her boss is like when he's telling her it's not a good idea to go on this He's like, you're just fishing after, like, Heathcliff or something like that. And it was like, mm-hmm. I was like, hey, I feel justified. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to this. Sorry. Okay, so, as I said before I interrupted myself, mm-hmm. they do flashbacks with Garrett remembering Catherine. Like, as, you know, when you lose someone, you often remember memories about them. And so, they were sort of high school sweethearts. Like, they met in grade school. And... Like, they gave each other a little val... Or she gave him valentine... No, he gave her valentines. Yes. And third grade or something like that. And then they kind of lost touch a little bit. And they got back together after college. It's not really high school sweethearts at all. But no. they, they've known Childhood each other. Childhood friends and they've always had, like, a crush on each other. Yes. And so um, we find out that she died because she stepped off the curb to cross the street. And an old man was driving a car and ended up hitting her. And his dad has been, like, pressuring. This is what we found this three years ago. His dad's like, you know, go find someone new. You can do it. And we find out his dad's a widower, too. Yeah. <laughs> who has never who has found never married. anyone new. And let me just tell y'all, don't pressure your widow, widower friends to go find someone. Yeah. They'll do it when they want to. Yeah. I'm like... Or when they're ready to. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't... No. It's their own personal choice. I mean, then we have people like uh, Terry Irwin. Like, Steve Irwin died however many years ago. And she's like, no, I'm happy to just be single for and work on me. And it's like, some people need their person. Some people need someone right away. Other people just let them be. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. if you're a widow or two and never That's found anyone. When he was getting all pushy and then you find out that the mom died, I was like, uh, <sighs> hold on. <laughs> right? I was so mad. I mean, he kind of makes up for it a little bit. They explain why in a, at, near the end of the book. Yeah. But, uh, just makes yeah. me mad. Yeah. Anyways. So, in the book. Movie. Book? Well, Movie. in the book, okay. the they go sailing for the first time at seven o'clock at night after their first run-in in In the movie they go sailing the next morning oh gosh yeah and when he (laughs) offers her to go the next morning he's like well maybe you would want to meet up for breakfast at the diner before i'll be at the diner at 6 a.m and then we can go sailing at seven and she's like oh 
I would like that. So then from this scene, we go into a diner scene. It doesn't like give clear anything to let you know what time of day it is. So my brain went, okay, it's nighttime. Cool. He's like getting dinner or something. And then halfway through the scene, I realized I was like, oh, no, this is supposed to be breakfast at the diner the next morning. (laughs) Anyways, this is also when some random dude comes into the diner and starts causing a fight with Garrett. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, what the heck is happening? Uh Uh-huh. And it gets physical and Garrett and him start throwing punches. And Teresa comes into the diner and sees this and is kind of taken aback by this and kind of just sits there and watches him. And, like, the whole scene, I feel like, was just to show how angry Garrett is over life. Because in the in the book, I didn't feel like he was very angry over life either. But I think you got a little bit more turmoil from him. So in the movie, you didn't get that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they did this. But who freaking knows? So then Garrett leaves the diner and, like him and Teresa kind of make eye contact but don't say anything and he leaves and then it cuts to him on the boat and Teresa comes and he's like I wasn't sure you were going to come and she's like no I'm coming and then they're on the boat and this is when you find out that the person that he just got in a fight with is Catherine's brother what? <laughs> there, Catherine had no siblings their parents barely got talked about if at all Yeah, it was like they added drama with Catherine's family to the movie. So no much. Reason. So annoying. Yeah, it was ridiculous. All right. So in the book, Garrett, and it's nighttime because they, like Bree said, they went on their date at night. The first day they met. And so they go out on their date. And so this is a really nice. Actually, it was very sweet. There's a little sailing date. And they just spend the whole day just talking, to, like, the whole date talking to each other, like, getting to know each other. Like, they shared all sorts of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they really went into Everything. their lives. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is something you don't tell anyone? Like, what were you, like, what is the worst choice you've ever made? Yeah. And stuff like that. And, but Catherine noticed that Garrett shared everything except... That he was married. Did I say Catherine? Teresa noticed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude. I'm going to do that all the time. <sighs> Teresa noticed she sh- he shared everything except Catherine. Mm-hmm. And so, but she was really honest and opened up about her divorce and everything. And, and her kid. Uh-huh. Which she was nervous about because everyone that she's dated that found out about her kid was kind of a jerk about her kid and didn't want to meet him, didn't want to be in his life, was really only looking for one thing. Yep. Which, what man isn't? <laughs> I'm pretty so bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so then uh, she's realizing because during their chat, she shared that you know she's a column columnist in <laughs> Boston, and so she's just here on vacation. So she realizes you know he's never gonna ask me to see him again because I'm I'm just a tourist girl and like it's the, nothing could go forward. Anyways, so she secretly s- hides her jacket under like one of the pillows or something uh, in the I don't know what you call it it's not the cab what do, what do you call it on a boat um below deck oh <laughs> well, I think below deck we're not ship people <laughs> no no I love Pirates of the Caribbean but I cannot tell you anything I know there's starboard aft port side port bow Mast, an anchor, <laughs> oars, <laughs> life, lifeboat. I guess there is a lifeboat yeah. too, but life jacket is what it I was is. trying to say. There you go. And so, anyways, so then you know their date ends, and like she goes back to her hotel, and his dad is then because they meet for breakfast all the time. So his dad's giving him a hard time, being like, "You didn't get any more information from her, like." what why like you know continually doing the pushing thing trying to get him to you know meet her more and everything like this and he's just like dude leave me alone Mm -hmm. and so which ends up uh gary ends up sharing less and less with his dad as the book Mm -hmm. goes on i wonder why exactly 
in the movie yeah you don't uh the n- oh it's the same day i forgot i want it to be the next day but then a scene happens that i'll tell you about where it makes it obvious that it was the same day so after they've been sailing garrett is with his dad back at the house and his dad's cutting his hair and then he goes have you talked to your mother lately and garrett goes yeah i got a letter from her yeah what the heck <laughs> so in the book she's dead but in the movie she's alive they're just, just like, not there or something like that <laughs> apparently yeah. and like which i guess maybe that's why they did it maybe they did that because the dad is pushy about it and they they realize that it made They're more like, sense. Oh, Nicholas Sparks, you yeah. don't really get this. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that happens, and then his dad sees Teresa's jacket in the like dining room area on one of the chairs, and is like, "Who's the jacket? Or nice jacket? Something like that." And Garrett's like, "Oh, it's this girl's. She left it on the boat when we sailed." He was like. You should probably go and return that to her. I loved his dad, though. I, he was really funny. So I I put a note in my notes that said, I like his dad, but I'm also biased because I love Paul Newman, and his dad was played by Paul Newman, and he, oh my gosh, what movie? There's a movie that I saw on a hot tin roof. There's a movie that I watched in college with Sierra where we both ended up like we left and we were like dang he was a babe (laughs) and like Sierra's like that's my like old school Hollywood crush he's amazing and then she wanted to watch a lot of his other movies but I saw two of them in college that I absolutely loved that I can't think of now but um so I'm biased when it comes to that so when I knew Paul Newman was his dad I knew I was gonna like him anyway (laughs) well there you go um so the whole scene is Garrett trying to get his dad to take the jacket to her hotel and his dad being like no you should because it's not every day that a jacket like that walks into your life or something like that Mm -hmm. and so then Garrett goes and gives Teresa her jacket and that's when she's like I had a good time this morning (laughs) yeah I was like, oh, what? <laughs> the what? Okay, so in the book, Teresa calls the shop. It was like, and Garrett answers. She's like, hey, I just want to let you know I left my jacket on the boat. And I, or I think if, I think I did. And I was wondering if it's there. And he's like, oh, I'll go down and check and let you know. And so he went and checked and he called her back and was like yeah it's here and she's like okay great I'll just come down and get it and so then he she goes and gets it and he invites her out to lunch to a local little lunch spot Mm -hmm. which is crap oh my gosh just like in in the lucky one Uh, that was in the lucky one and the notebook yeah the notebook too crap this is what I was so last night when I was talking to Allie I said that it well I guess I kind of mentioned it at the start of this too it just feels like a lot of his books have a lot of the same themes and the same elements and yes he's a romance writer so obviously some things are going to be the same (laughs) but it's always in North Carolina or somewhere they all go sit out on their porches which honestly the only ones that make sense the only one that makes sense for this is Garrett going and sitting on his porch because he lives on the beach and they always eat crab. They always cook dinner together. I think it would be different if it was kind of like what Stephen King does, and he ties them all, and he ties them all together. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick with it. <laughs> so, like, if there were elements, yeah, like, like yeah. we'll find out in the in this book that Catherine was a painter. Yeah. I really wanted them to be like, oh, this girl named Allie painted them. Yeah, and I guess it wouldn't have worked because this movie came out first yeah but like stuff like that to link it together yeah i think that would be so cool but just yeah well especially because in the book catherine's not a painter that wasn't brought up yeah (laughs) yeah we'll get there (laughs) well that was my next note (laughs) oh okay there you go but anyway so after 
um, lunch, he then invites her to dinner. And he says he makes the best steak there is. And I just want to interject because I don't want to, like, crap on Nicholas Parks. Because I do. I enjoyed A Walk to Remember. Loved it. Lucky One is okay-ish. But I like the lucky one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think because we read four of his books for us in like three weeks, it was a bit too much. I think if we sprinkled it throughout, it would have been better. Yeah. That's why I'm like, cool. I'll give us a year before we do another <laughs> Nicholas Sparks. And at that point, we'll only do two. Yes. I think that's um, a good idea. So, yeah. Because... I obviously know he's a good writer. Like, he's so popular among women. Right. He's a great romance writer. It's just that when you read four of his books back to back to back, he's it's not that amazing. Yeah. That's fair. All right. So she said yes. Teresa said yes about coming over for dinner. And just like The Notebook, they're chit-chatting over dinner and every other romance book, as we just said. And this is when he's honest, though, and he tells Teresa about Catherine. And then we get in her monologue about how he's feeling really guilty because he's really crushing on Teresa, this woman he met yesterday. And he just feels guilty, and he can't figure out his emotions. And so, as he's figuring this all out, oh, um, so they're talking more, and they're, they're getting closer and closer, and she's like, I just don't want to get hurt. <laughs> and he's like, I'll never hurt you. And she's like, yeah, but if you're not ready to move on from Catherine, I'm going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, <sighs> like gets, there's no moving on. No, from. it's move for, wait, yeah, no, move forward, mm-hmm. but not move on. Yeah. Anyway, she acts like they've only just broken up, not yeah, that I'm, she's died. It gets worse. So I'm going to save my soapbox yeah. for a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but all of a sudden, then they just go on to have sex. <laughs> Garrett sure is feeling guilty over here. I guess I can't say that because I think I would feel guilty if I was liking someone too. But yeah. after a day? Yeah, that's that's the other thing about Nicholas Sparks that I appreciate with A Walk to Remember. Allie mentions it in the episode, but every single female puts out right after, like... Ooh, we had a great first date. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on, girl. Don't you have a little bit of self-respect? Yeah. <laughs> Can't you wait till date two? <laughs> At least. Come I on. guess this was date two. It was technically Ow. date three for them. One and but two and three were in the same day. I feel like <laughs> I feel like one and two also weren't really dates. Yeah. It was kind of like, ooh, maybe I like you. And then date three was really like, he asked her out. He was like, I know how to make a good steak. Yeah. That was really like day one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now Teresa's there for four more days. Wait, hold on. We should probably go to the movie. Yeah, <laughs> we should. That's why I paused. <laughs> so when he's dropping off the jacket to her, he, rather than just being in the book, he just is like, you should come over for dinner. Doesn't tell her anything about dinner until she gets to his house. Mm-hmm. In the movie, he's like, trying to convince her to come over by telling her that he knows how to make a mean steak and they like joke about it and she's like do you really it's like yeah i really do i guess they put that in there because they don't show that he makes steak in the movie so little tidbit for people who read the book but yeah also for people who read the book it's kind of (laughs) stupid redundant (laughs) so then when she comes to dinner they get to talking. This is when Garrett tells her about Catherine because she sees Catherine's painting over the fireplace and it's like a boat thing and he talks about his wife and she died two years prior, not three years like in the book. Why? Why make that change? <laughs> yeah, that change makes no sense. Uh, and then she, <laughs> after she finds out that Catherine's dead, she tries to relate to him. By telling a story about when her dad died and how her mom, because she's gone into Catherine's paint studio and realized that there's a painting that isn't finished that Garrett hasn't, like, touched 
anything in the room with and so she's like I remember when my dad died and my mom would uh my mom left his shirt on the back of this chair because he left it there and that was where it stayed and I was like girl first off how does that relate to him at all it's your dad (laughs) not your husband right like why and why are you trying to you can he was very put off by her talking about this but she kept prying and kept moving forward i will give pro like uh, the reason i think that happened is because people don't know how to talk about death and yeah. like so i think that was their awkward they were showing that Teresa has no idea what she's talking about type yeah. of thing yeah so i think that's why they did that because yeah it did have that feel of like just, uh, yeah it's so awkward yeah and then the whole entire night he just kept sitting so close to her whereas in the book he was like I like her but I'm also having conflicting feelings about this because I feel guilty about like moving forward Uh and then the other big thing that happens in this scene is well I guess there's quite a few Uh, (laughs) Garrett just tells her how Catherine dies right here and now and it's not how she dies in the no, book. No, it's not by getting hit by a car. It's because she was sick. <laughs> That's all you find out right now. She was sick. She died. So then, in the movie, she ends up staying the night. <laughs> this is not... She doesn't stay the night the first night that they're together. She goes back to her hotel because she's also waiting for a call from her kid and all this. Whereas in the movie, she stays the night. She is on the couch and he's in the bed and she wakes up and comes into the room and is like I just wanted to be close to you and he lets her in keep in mind in the movie they haven't had sex yet yeah so it's like they're still strangers like they haven't kissed or anything yet no and, and she's just like I want to yeah. be close to you and like yeah. and he's he like half naked and, like, and just like her. yeah yeah it, it was so weird yeah it made no sense and another big difference is that he is not a scuba instructor in this movie. Oh, Instead, yeah. he wants to build boats. Yeah. I know. The only boat they built was when he restored. Happenstance. Uh-huh. All right. So, Teresa is there for four more days on her little vacation. And they spend the four days completely together now. This is the book. And they're basically inseparable. They're freaking having sex all the time and it's like so irritating and so I'm like wow you got over that real quick I know right so she's getting ready to leave and she's like how are we going to make this work God. and you don't want to do this long distance oh my god Garrett's like I don't know about long distance thing like I just don't I just I'm going to be so sad when you're not here I don't know if I'll be able to handle it type of thing and and she's like, well, I came and visited you. You have to come and visit me. <laughs> yeah, but also in her mind, this is him giving up on her, and she's he's choosing Catherine over her. <laughs> like, uh. she's just pissed. And she says, uh, you know, I lost somebody, too. I got divorced. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> okay, first of all, you guys, don't ever compare your divorce to someone's spouse dying I am part of a widow page widow widower page on Facebook and people will come on there and they'll be like my sister just compared that her divorce is worse than (laughs) my husband dying or like Teresa did comparing you know I've lost somebody too I know what you're going through you don't No, and i would never do the opposite i would never be like you know my person died therefore my pain is worse than this person getting divorced that's no you can't do that either it's just like they're apples and oranges you cannot compare them Mm -hmm. so don't plus why are you trying to compare them exactly you shouldn't be comparing anyone's pain to anyone's pain. right everyone is entitled to their own pain and Mm -hmm. it doesn't if you love him You'll let him grieve. Yes. You'll let him go through that process and you won't tell him that he's pitting you against her or 
right. anything in that, if that makes sense. It does. Thanks. There was a... Uh, yeah, because it's because it goes on with her just being upset, right? Saying that yeah. you know you just love Catherine more than me and all this sort of stuff. Okay, I I think it says it a little later, but it, it's brought up that you know a relationship is between two people, not three people. Yeah. Yeah. And where I agree with that, like, so when I get into a new relationship, I obviously know I need to separated but also yeah. not right it's, it's like i can't compare no cameron to no. whoever this new person is right and so but also i mean he's what, always part of my life what <sighs> kept driving me insane with her is i wanted him to be like do you not realize that if she were alive i would not be with you right like Oh my god. It's as plain and simple as that. Like uh, I've always said that. Uh, this is freaky. Before Cameron passed and we would watch mm -hmm. like Grey's Anatomy or something and like yeah. there would be a widower or a widow. Yeah. I'd be like, you know, it takes a special person to marry a widow or a widower because they have to know that they would not be mm -hmm. with them if their person was still here. Yeah. Yeah. And so I remember first like couple days that I was on this widow page might have actually been a different page but someone posted about their chapter two that's what we call it your second person mm -hmm. they were getting married or they just moved in together i think they just moved in together and she was you know they were decorating the house together and he asked her so she was the widow she he asked her where the collage of her husband was that she had displayed at his funeral yeah because he's like thanks like to him you are who you oh, are I like and i wouldn't have fallen in love with you if it if wasn't it wasn't for so him. this is a team effort relationship Look, you're gonna make me cry i know <laughs> so he hung it up and oh. like he fist bumped it because he's like it was like a team thing and so i'm like okay <laughs> gotta find my teammate out there that yeah. like understands that Cameron is still always part of my life yeah and that's why part of me is like it will be easier <laughs> to find a widower because yeah. they'll know what I'm going yeah. through but at the same point this guy wasn't mm -mm. a widower and he understood and he understood so Teresa it's just want a drop, bitch. <laughs> drop kicker yeah, yeah. she's just no way she, Garrett just needs to not even touch that uh, yeah like <laughs> good she was your doorway to get out there but please move on yes <laughs> go away from her yes i agree anyways that was my first soapbox okay <laughs> okay i feel like this is just where the book and the movie just totally diverge from each other because this is the whole entire scene now in the movie where Catherine's family comes to garrett's house and is pissed because they want the painting that she didn't finish and they're upset because they don't have any of her paintings but Garrett has given her or given them everything else of hers and the only things he has left is the paintings and they're pissed because they want the paintings too because if it weren't for him they think she would still be alive obviously that doesn't happen in the book because her family is not in the right. book uh, then Teresa and Garrett go out on the boat again kind of like their second date third date something it's their <laughs> second day hanging out together and this is where they have sex they have sex on someone else's boat <laughs> yeah, <it was> weird. <laughs> what uh and then that night they come back and they're cooking dinner and you find out that Teresa's gonna have dinner with his dad yeah she never meets the dad in the book until no. the very end of the book I guess I should continue because during the dinner scene the three of them are talking and Garrett and Teresa have kind of gotten into it because right before the dinner she was in the painting room looking at all of Catherine's stuff and he came in upset that she was in there and she moved stuff she moved stuff she was looking at like paintings and things like that and, and she we, had we find out when the family comes 
the reason he doesn't want to give the paintings is because Catherine was the last person to touch them. So the fact that Teresa now touched them is what kind of set him off. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing, too, is his dad rushed out during that scene with the painting in his hand. I kept thinking about that, too. I was like, okay, your dad just now is the last person to touch them. Oh, my gosh. That's right. Anyways. So then she has a cup of water. And the cup of water spills, and it spills on Catherine's shoes that are still there, too. So then he just gets put in a bad mood. So then the whole dinner, him and her are almost fighting, but not. They're not really talking to each other. And the dad's just being great comedic relief throughout this whole scene. Yes. So then Garrett goes inside to take care of dishes or something. The dad and Teresa talk, and he tells Teresa that the marriage wasn't that great that Catherine and Garrett were two different people and that she didn't want to stay in the small town so she left for New York and all of this extra crap you also then find out that she was pregnant when she got sick and died but the whole like when he was explaining how she died all I could think was why wasn't she in the hospital Yep. what did she get sick with that's not what happened in the Book. No, obviously we've explained what happened in the book. She was pregnant in the book, we find out later though. So I'm glad that they kept that little tiny element, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then to find out they didn't have a good relationship. Yeah. Like in the book, in the they book had it a was a great, great relationship. Yeah. And then in the movie this was when I noted and said she doesn't work anymore cuz she hadn't been back to work. This whole time. She hadn't even checked in with her job at any point in time. So she does end up going back. So in the book, she gets back to her job and she's kind of like, oh, I don't know if he's going to call me or whatever. Well, she gets to her job and there's freaking roses there. And then he ends up calling her. And then they're chatting, and then she plans on coming down two weeks later Mm -hmm. and bringing Kevin. Mm -hmm. And uh, Garrett's also having these nightmares throughout this whole, uh, the whole book. Like, there's random ones where, like, he's chasing Catherine, and, like, she's Mm -hmm. she's almost about to fall over a cliff. And, like, she just keeps saying things like, oh, you don't remember me, you won't remember me. Like, just random. Yeah logical nightmares that a widower would have i think yeah. about moving forward oh i think so and so anyways so i'm just gonna put that there so i don't have to talk about them anymore <laughs> that works <laughs> and so they agree she's gonna come down in two weeks and bring kevin and to get kevin excited they say that like you know, Garrett's going to teach you how to scuba dive and everything like that. And Kevin's like, oh, okay, that sounds fun. And um, while this two weeks is going, Garrett sends her 12 more roses and, all, like, all this sort of stuff that I'm like. You know, I've never even had one guy send me one thing of flowers. <laughs> and this guy, who is a widower, is sending someone two so she, he met in, like, this, a week? Right, he met this girl for four days. And it's like, oh, I'm so in love. She deserves flowers. Oh, man, whatever. So, then they get back down there. So, a different thing between the book and the movie is the book is based off of months and months and months. So, mm-hmm. they'll go, they they flew to and from each other's places. A few different times. Yeah, with like weeks in it, between. It is actually like a, I don't want to say a solid relationship because it wasn't solid, but in the amount of effort they both were putting into it it was solid yeah whereas in the movie it happens in like a month yeah Yeah. everything (sighs) yeah whatever so they go down there and then kevin's a little nervous at first but then garrett you know does a great mom's boyfriend thing and like gets down on his level and gets him excited for things and like does he's like okay i can I did like this scene where Garrett was with the kid. Like, I, I liked this whole part of it. I was like, oh, they could actually be a good couple. Yeah. If Teresa wasn't such a <laughs> idiot. Okay, so Garrett is, like, gave Kevin his, you know, test. And he's like, go study for the test. And then this is when him and Catherine can get their alone time. Yeah. 
And so then they end up staying the night and like, because Kevin just falls asleep. He's so tired. But this really created the cute bond that we were talking about. Yeah. And so then, you know, they end up going home and uh, now Garrett comes to Boston for the first time. And he's really surprised that he was enjoying it because he was like, wow, this city is, you know, not what I expected at all. Mm -hmm. And he met uh, Deanna and they just ended up having a good time in Boston. And then Garrett went home and they had done this. They were doing this for a couple of months, back and forth, back and forth. And Teresa and Garrett hadn't seen each other in about three weeks. And they, she planned to come for Thanksgiving. But then she got a really important uh, meeting from her boss. Yeah, Deanna is her boss. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you have to come to me in this meeting. Like, it'll open a lot of opportunities for you. And so this was the part I was like, ah, because her dad, or Garrett's dad was so excited to meet. Because this is when they were first going to meet. Yeah. And Garrett was so excited for it, too. Yeah. So his dad bought, like, two days worth of, like, maid service to clean the house. Mm -hmm. And then... A whole new wardrobe. Yep. And, like, what does she want to eat? When does she want to eat? And all Mm -hmm. this sort of stuff. And the day before Thanksgiving. She has to cancel. Yeah, she's like, I have this really important meeting. I can't miss it. And, like, this is when Garrett gets a little peeved. He's, Tiffed. Yeah, he's upset. And, but his dad's like, you know, get over it. Like, like these things happen. <laughs> yes. But you do need to figure out who's living where because you guys can't keep yeah. going on like this. Yeah. And so, uh, Garrett then goes up to Teresa's house eventually and she like takes him to a fancy restaurant she's mm-hmm. taken him to do all this fancy stuff and yeah. her head she's like I'm showing him that Boston's great and yeah. he'll want to move here and in his head he's like I just wanted to spend the weekend with Teresa I haven't seen her in yeah. forever and I have this chat I want to talk to her about yeah and and this is not the life that he wants to live. Yeah, he likes the ocean life. Yeah, he and likes simplicity, and she's showing him basically the opposite. Yeah. And so then they get at – well, then we find out that Teresa, thanks to this meeting, got a great opportunity from her job. And she's so excited and everything, and he's just kind of like, oh, I don't know what any of this means. Yeah. And But then they get back to the apartment, and then they have a little argument, him being like – I just want to spend the weekend with you and I have stuff I want to talk to you about like I don't think we can do this anymore I and she's like shocked are you breaking up with me he's like that's not what I mean I think we need to figure out where we're living and live together and but of course neither of them are like well I'll move to to you you. Yeah. yeah yeah and so she's like I just need some wine like I just need a break and he she leaves and he's like, you know what? I always think better when I write things down. So he starts looking for a pen and paper. And this is when he finds the letters. It's not how he found the letters in the... No. In the movie. We're jumping back quite a bit. Oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You, you were on a roll. So I was like... <laughs> just keep I kept wanting to be like, should I jump in and you should. say sorry, some sorry. stuff? No, it's fine. So back to the dinner with dad. And so like they had their conversation whatever so now it's time for Teresa to go back to work and essentially they break up they're not willing to do the long distance thing they don't want to say goodbye to each other they have a very awkward make out session before she gets in her car to leave but it's never a okay I'll call you when I get there okay I'll do this so they're both going about their day and Garrett realizes that he misses Teresa so then he calls her on the phone and is like hey it's me and she answers the phone and is like (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) he is the problem (laughs) Um, so they then like talk and he's like I miss you she's like yeah I miss you too and then he's like maybe I should come and visit and she's like, well, my kid's going to be here, so if you want to meet him, I'm sure you can come and visit. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so he flies up to visit. First time they see each other, they, like, kiss. Like, nothing's happened. Like, 
hey, what's up? It's like, we didn't just break up. We're still together. Yeah. So he comes to visit because you couldn't bribe the kid to go down and visit him. And they also had just broken up. So his mom's not trying to be like, hey, guess what? You're going to meet my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So uh, his dad, Garrett's dad, when he was getting him on the like plane said make sure you have a gift for the kid because that's how you get this kid to like you so he picks up a gift from the airport for Teresa and the kid and the kid is also 10 not 12 or maybe even like 9 or he 8 looks little. he was a tiny little thing mm -hmm. and Garrett got him a little like race car thing I think mm -hmm. and so the kid's playing at dinner with it and then he gives Teresa the box of chocolates and the kid's like mom doesn't like chocolate <laughs> so, <cute. laughs> so then he switches the gifts and gives Teresa the car and the kid the chocolate it was cute I yeah, liked that scene. it was very cute that's why I, I said that <laughs> yeah oh I forgot let me just interject yeah when Kevin and Teresa were on their way home mm -hmm. after the first visit mm -hmm. I loved Kevin being like so are you going to marry him? And yeah. her being like, I, I don't know. I'm definitely not right now. And he's like, well, so maybe someday. She's like, maybe. And he's like, good, because you looked really happy. Yeah. I was like, no. oh, that was really cute. Mm -hmm. I liked that. So I did, too. I wish that happened in the movie. I, I do, too. Yeah, I wish the connection between the kid and Garrett happened. But they took out the scuba thing. So they did. That was, yeah. There's no way for them. Like, they do have a nice little scene together uh -huh. that we're about to get to. But it's not like the book. I liked the book for that part way better. So, in the movie, she's super nervous and anxious for Garrett to meet her kid. She's like fussing about the whole time. Whereas in the book, she was just like, "Okay, cool. You're meeting my kid. Like this is the obvious step for us to have to take to make this work." Mm -hmm. So then, after their dinner, he stays. He sleeps on the couch. The next day, it's him and the kid hanging out and they're doing their day he comes and stops by her work <laughs> with yeah. the kid to say hi <laughs> so then of course everyone's like fawning over him and staring at him but the whole time i was like why 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 this is just how he's gonna find out because mm -hmm. i was also prepared because the whole entire movie has been so different from the book i right at this point we realized how much we had left in the movie and we're like okay he's gonna find out soon so it's yeah, probably we gonna like, be when here. is it over <laughs> <laughs> like, it's probably gonna be here at the freaking news place whatever after he leaves her work doesn't find out there uh he goes in sales with the kid and it's cute like he messes with the kid's hat because the kid can't see while he's trying to steer and all that the next day Teresa's like I almost said Kevin, and it's not Kevin. <laughs> Jason is going to his friend's house to stay the night, so it's just going to be me and you tonight. So get the kid out and about. They have sex right away. <laughs> For <Yeah>. forever. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, I really need a shower. And she gets in the shower. <laughs> and Garrett is sitting there in the bed, and he sees that the nightstand has like a little doily cloth that's stuck in the drawer and he tries to pull it out but it's stuck in there so he has to open it and when he takes the doily out he sees a bottle in her drawer he recognizes that bottle uh -huh. and he pulls it out and was like huh and then he goes and <laughs> finds a sheet protector that's got his letters in it it looked really stalkerish because it was like it wasn't just like the letters Loose leaf yeah it was <laughs> they were protected yeah. <laughs> so then she comes out and he's already packed his bag and he storms out of her house and she runs after him and of course it's raining of course so they get into a huge heated argument outside in the pouring down rain and this is when you also find out uh Teresa is trying to explain herself and explain why she hadn't told him and be like, but I wanted to tell you. And she's like, the three letters that I found just made me really want to meet you. And he's like, hold up, three letters? And she's like, yeah. And he 
runs back into her apartment and goes through her drawers to go and find that letter, which we then find out Catherine wrote. Because he only wrote two. Oh, this, yeah. That's, yeah. This entire time, he only wrote two letters. When in the book, he writes them all the time when he has his feelings. And it's like, mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, yeah. So he runs in, finds this letter, and then we get a flashback. Well, actually, as he's running into the apartment, we get a flashback before he's found the letter. And we see that Catherine was on the edge of some rocks, and she threw in a letter into the ocean, and he came and found her. And that was how she got sick, and that was how she died, because she had been standing out there for so long before she threw the letter and before he found her. And when he got her back, she just she didn't survive because she was so cold and there was no way for him to heat her up yep. he tried laying next to her even yeah i don't get i don't know yeah. what the heck yep <laughs> uh it was kind of nice i did like that Catherine wrote a letter because then he got like yeah some closure but also it was just weird yeah because it screwed up how she died and it screwed up it was weird yeah. quite a bit else in the book, as I said, now Garrett found the letters because he was looking for a pen and paper, and he's pissed. He does the same thing. He packs his stuff, and he's just, like, furious, and he storms out. And he goes home, and, oh, no, then he's, like, he's so mad, he tells Ka- uh, Teresa, he's like, you and I never had anything like Catherine and I had. And I was like, <laughs> okay, that was a little mean, I yeah, guess. Yeah, very mean. So. But also, like... <laughs> this whole time i've been wanting him to say something along those lines right and so um once he gets home his dad is like what happened and this is when he tells his dad everything he shares about all the dreams he's been having and about how she you know had all the letters and everything like that and this is when his dad's like you know, I, it might have not been here. It might have actually been at Thanksgiving. But basically his dad at one point says, I never moved on from your mother and I wish I had and I know she wished I had. So that's why his dad has been pushing him to move on, yeah. which I'm glad. Yeah. I, I just wish he explained it because it, it's more so he doesn't want him to waste his life yeah being lonely because being lonely sucks and he from experience knows that but this whole time he just seems like he's a pushy old man right so he, he could have done a better job at it but i'm glad he kind of came and redeemed himself a little bit yeah and so then we're at garrett's kind of pissed off all right so he's like mad that his dad's not on his side or anything like this mm-hmm. but then there's a knock at the door and who is it it's Teresa. Shocking. <laughs> and she. Because they have to talk about it. Right. So she comes inside and this is his dad slowly leaves and they don't even talk. They no. just like slowly get closer to each other and start making out and then they have sex. <laughs> and then. Garrett, After they've just broke up. Yes. And Garrett falls asleep for a couple hours and then he wakes up to find Teresa at the table and she's looking at the letters oh because he took the letters home he's like these are mine and so she's looking at the letters and as she's he wakes up and he comes over to like you know like kiss her good morning or whatever she's just good afternoon yeah that's right he took a nap good afternoon she's just like yeah we can't do this anymore (laughs) i'm like so you just flew all this way to get to laid <laughs> one more time and be like okay bye which is also stupid because like obviously if he just did that with you he's kind of forgiven you right so you guys could move forward from this and it's like she also okay to be fair she also came to like fully explain what happened so yeah. she did tell him like hey it wasn't my idea and all this sort of stuff but girl you were like doing the tease. She was. She was doing oh, like for the strip sure. show and everything. Yeah. It wasn't like a mute. Well, it was mutual, obviously. Yeah. But it was like her initiating it. And yeah. I was like. Because at first he was standoff. But yeah. then he caved. And then she's like, bye bye. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was so bad. So in the movie, uh, now that cat. <laughs> See? You got me doing <laughs> it. <laughs> now that Teresa is home, she decides 
to write an article about her whole experience. Oh, God. Because, you know, that's what got her in trouble the first time. Why not do more? Gotta make it better. So then, after this article gets written, she gets a new job. Which I guess, when you were just explaining, I forgot about the whole meeting. Uh Uh-huh. So that was the movie's way of doing the meeting that progresses her career. So she gets a new job. She gets a new office. And when she's in her new office setting it up, she gets mail. And she gets a letter. Well, not really a letter from Garrett, but kind of a letter. Because this whole entire time, you also see that Garrett has decided that he's going to work on the boat. And in this, too, he's also gone and given Catherine's paintings. I almost said Teresa's paintings. Catherine's paintings to her family. He's starting to move forward because in the fight with Teresa in the rain, she says something about how you're never going to move on from Catherine or whatever. So he's trying to take the initiative to move on. (laughs) And uh, so he gives her family the paintings He then decides to start working on the boat that he never finished. Her brother comes and helps him finish this boat. When the boat is finished, she takes pictures and sends it to Teresa with a letter on the back saying, this is when I'm going to christen the boat and take it out on its first voyage. Would love to see you, blah, blah, blah. So Teresa goes and decides, yeah, I'm going to. And she gets him a gift and is excited but doesn't tell him, surprises him. So then when she goes to the docks, he's giving a speech and he's named his boat Catherine and he's toasting his boat to Catherine because that's his dead wife. Right. (laughs) It makes sense. Who he started working on the boat with. Yeah. It's only fair. And then her brother helped build the boat too. Like what? Uh, So Teresa hears this and gets upset. And Garrett's dad sees her and he tries to like go and say hi to her, but she shakes his head or her head and is like, no, don't. So then after Garrett goes on a little sail with his boat, he then comes back to his house to find Teresa there sitting there waiting for him. And he's like, my dad said you were here. I'm so glad you came. I wish I'd saw you when you were at the docks. And she was like, yeah, it was a surprise, but no (laughs) and then he apologizes for what he said in his speech because it had to have hurt her I know gosh that's what I didn't like I feel like he apologized a lot yeah when he had no need to apologize there was no reason for him to apologize it was her who needed to apologize for how she was behaving agreed so she basically does the whole like they don't have sex at this point but she does the whole bit that the book has where she came out to reconcile with him but decides no this isn't for me because you're still too in love with your wife yeah (laughs) wow shock (laughs) (laughs) so she then leaves and goes back home and Garrett then is oh he goes into the house and he finds the gift that she had for him laying on his bed and he opens it and she quotes the damn line from the letter that I hate in the movie. I know. <laughs> the home away from home or whatever. <laughs> oh, I was so mad when I saw that. I was like, no, you did not. Because it was a compass. So it was like. To help you find your way back home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> so then after he's found this, he decides to write a letter to Catherine again. He goes and sits at his typewriter and like Ali said types very very slowly (laughs) and then he gets on his boat to go and toss the letter out but then when he's on his boat he sees that there's another ship out there that's stuck in this storm and he like decides to go and help them because it looks like the boat's going overboard or something and he goes to save them and He gets the dad and the daughter out, but the mom is still in the water, so he jumps in to go and save her, but he and the mom do not survive. And Teresa gets a phone call from Garrett's dad, letting her know that he has died. So then when Teresa goes 
to Garrett's place for the funeral. Her er, her dad, <laughs> his dad, it's like, we found one last letter on the boat when we went to search it or whatever. And there's a bottle with a message in it and his wedding ring. <laughs> God, he's going to toss his wedding ring, too. Yeah. <laughs> And it's basically the letter saying, goodbye, dearest Catherine. I'm finally letting you go so that I can go and be with Teresa. If only I can win her heart over. Yeah. All right. I got to paint you guys a picture. So. (laughs) (laughs) So. Well, first off, let's get caught up. So the, the, he does die. Well, okay. Hold on. Let me think how I want to do this. He goes out onto the boat also. Oopsies. Sorry. He goes out onto the boat also to toss one last letter to Catherine Mm -hmm. and the reason he goes we find out to do this is because Catherine always dreamed of going to Europe and he knows that these waters possibly could get the bottle to Europe this was the point in the book where I started going okay and then this is going to happen and then this is his thought process with this and then she's going to get this and then (laughs) this happens and then the dad's gonna say this and i was like how in the hell (laughs) how do i know this (laughs) and so he goes out there but there's a storm coming and he knows this but he's like you know what it's 25 miles away if i do this quick i'll be there no problem well it's coming in faster than he thought also in the book during one of his sailing trips with Teresa, he told her about how you don't want to ever get caught in I can't remember the technical technical term for it, but essentially it's like when the temperatures and the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air are the same, there's no wind. And so he's only ever been stuck in that situation once before Uh until the end of this book. Yes. So he gets stuck again and he's in the process of, you know, trying to get out, trying to do anything to save himself. And it kind of leaves us at that. Mm-hmm. And then... We go back to Teresa. Yep. We go back to Teresa. But it's also, like, Teresa flash forward a little bit. Yeah. And so we get... A few a, months. Yes. And she's Maybe thinking, not months. Maybe, like, a couple... No, no, it's a few months, but she then is thinking back on the time. Oh, okay. So then she And gets, then you find out what happened. Yes. So she like gets a, week a after. phone call from... Uh, dad and he's like you need to come here I have something to tell you and I can't tell you over the phone and this is the first time that she's even interacting yeah with dad in yep. the book yep and so she goes there goes and I at this point had paused like I was like okay I'm done for the night I got <laughs> stuff to do and the next day Brie the and best I, part is like Ali had texted me about things and I could tell that she wasn't at the end yet well because like, of this mm. so we're talking about how I'm like I'm so annoyed because everyone dies in Nicholas Sparks's <laughs> books <laughs> that was it. I'm like so it's like why what's the point like all of like ugh and then I except hit, for I'm a firm believer that Jamie does not die in A Walk to Remember because of how that book ends the fact that he ends with and this is why I now believe in miracles. <laughs> Jamie's alive. <laughs> but so I'm like, gosh, it's so annoying. Like, but for this book, I just was talking about how Catherine died. And then I hit play. <laughs> 30 seconds in, the dad goes, yeah, they found his body. And I'm like, oh, my. So I text Bria. I'm like, WTF. He dies. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh. It's just like, <gasps> yeah. So, yeah. So he dies. But he dies because he's stuck in the storm, not because he's trying to save someone. I like that they tried to make him noble. I, yeah, the book's way made sense, but like watching it play out, the movies made sense too. Yeah, I agree. So then she also, like the movie, got a bottle, a message in a bottle. Was it Catherine's they found or was it one for Teresa? No, he wrote a letter to Teresa That's and mailed it to her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, th- okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. She, and I thought that was sweet. Yeah, because he wanted, she wanted to know why. Why was he out there? No one knew yeah. why he would go out yeah. there because he knows how to sail and he knows yeah. not to go in a storm. Yeah. And so this was his letter kind of like explaining it. And then 
she writes him a letter and tosses it into the ocean, basically being like, she doesn't say this, but basically like, oh, I'm a widow now. I understand what you were going through. Yeah. And like, yeah, it was like, but I know I can love again because you showed me that you could love again. <laughs> Therefore, I know I can. I was so mad. I was like, more comparing. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> so annoying. But anyways. Yeah. And that was that was it. Yep. yep. Yay, we're done. Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Let's dive into this casting. Yes. IMDb cast 41 people for this movie. IMDb cast? IMDb cast. Credits. Oh. Credits. You usually say IMDb cat or <laughs> IMDb credits. Is that what you usually 41 say? cast members. All right. <laughs> Not whatever imdb cast. they casted it yeah that's right okay that makes sense i'm just ready to be over with this book you guys sorry <laughs> where you want people are you ready to be in twilight i am actually like you've talked not because she's excited <laughs> no i'm just ready to be done with these books all right you guys let's do this so <laughs> kevin costner played garrett i love kevin costner so i'm fine with kevin costner he was not who i pictured he was older yeah he was like 10 years older garrett was supposed to be like 27 so here's who i got okay my original one he's too young so i couldn't officially cast him i told ellie i would flip her shit if she did (laughs) (laughs) he would have been 22 when this movie came out amber heard (laughs) 2.0 Who was it? Was, it was Orlando Bloom from oh. like Elizabeth Town. <laughs> he's hot. <laughs> age like that yeah, type of stuff. He's too young. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I couldn't cast him. So then they didn't fit the part right, but I could not figure out who I wanted. So the next closest in 1999 mm-hmm. age. Johnny Depp. <laughs> no, I like brad pitt's look in 1999 or george clooney which was kind of like the er age yeah yeah so like they they weren't perfect they weren't who i I wanted orlando bloom but he was too young is like because garrett's blonde so when you were saying that you were casting i was like well brad pitt but also brad pitt doesn't fit this oh so you were thinking brad pitt too for you to recast yeah. yeah but that's funny. He doesn't fit it well. Well, no, but that's why I said they weren't the ones who I wanted. I wanted Orlando Bloom, but he's also not blonde. But <laughs> like his Elizabeth Town movie age. Yeah. He looks so good in that movie. <laughs> he's like one of my celebrity crushes. Or he used to be. I guess I haven't seen him in anything in a long time. Yeah, because he doesn't. He doesn't do it no, anymore. No. Yeah. Yeah. But damn, when he was legless, I was all about that shit. Oh my god! I wanted I love, to be with him so bad watch when I was a kid. Next I used week. to walk around as a little kid, and I would shoot things imaginarily. And bam, like, bam. Yeah, Legolas. and yep, exactly. I would be like, I'm legless. Okay, so that was my first one. Okay, and we got Robin Wright, who was Teresa. I'm pretty sure it's Robin Wright Penn, but. Yes, she was fine. I like. I actually she, liked her. It did say better. she was cast. It did the quotes. You know how it sometimes yeah. says it was like yeah. written as Robin Wright Penn. Yeah. But it, it, yeah. Oh. Okay. So, so I just did the first part. Okay. I didn't do. I think she, she got married. Oh, I see. And that's so what the now pen she's is. She's a pen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I liked her. Yeah. I. In the book, I hated Teresa, but watching her portray Teresa. It's funny because before I watched the movie, I was like, oh, I'm going to hate her. I'm going to have to recast her. But then like 10 minutes in, I was like, oh, you actually do justice to her. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Paul Newman is Dodge, who is the dad. Dad of Garrett. Mm-hmm. We've already talked about this. Yeah, I love, love him. him. So, yeah. yeah. So Robbie Coltrane is Charlie, who is Teresa's boss. And we just have to talk about him because I love Hagrid. Yeah. I was just going to say I love him for what he was, even though he wasn't in the book. Yes. <laughs> yes. So he deserved a mention. Yes. Okay, then we have Jesse James. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, poor kid. Mean parents played Jason, who was known as Kevin in the book. I thought he was cute. I thought he was fine. He was cute, but he wasn't no, who he I did pictured not. Kevin as. So I recast him as Taryn Noah, Taryn Noah Smith, who was the youngest kid on Tool Time, whatever it's Home Improvement. The littlest you one. Have a picture. Uh huh. I haven't seen that show in ages. So, so this is him a little older, but it would have been that age. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's who I pictured him as. Right age mm-hmm. for the year? Yep. Okay. I, I double checked. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sure. Um, yep. <laughs> I'll give that to you. Cool. All right. Is the movie theme and book theme the same? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do the characters stay true? Oh. Wow. Kind of. I actually think so. Yeah. I was prepared to say no. I was too, (laughs) because none of the other ones are. Yeah. And then I just realized, I was like, wait a minute. But I feel like when we were watching it last night, we said no. We did. I think we were just pissed. I think we were just... (laughs) I feel like... Garrett may have been a little more. Oh, he was more on edge I with was the fighting. Say, you you didn't like Garrett at the beginning because he didn't seem into it. Whereas to me, it just made sense that he wasn't right into it right away. Yeah, he seemed more like angry and irritated yeah. more than book Garrett. But I mean, I it, think theme wise, he stayed yeah. pretty much the same. Okay, yeah, I think so. yeah more than any of the other the yeah ones. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. What do you prefer, book or movie? Okay, so Why? <laughs> this whole time I've been trying to figure it out. And then I took what you said to me forever ago into consideration, what? which was if you had to do one of them over again, which one would you do? So if someone came up to you and said, you can either read this or watch this, what are you going to do? I would watch. So I'm going to go movie. Would you watch it because it's quicker? Yeah. Or because you enjoyed it more. <laughs> well, let's be honest. I forgot that I read the book. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm a fan of the movie. <laughs> I don't even know. I hated both of them. If you had to, which one would you do again? I think I would go book again because I liked yeah. Garrett in the book more. Yeah. See, I love kevin costner so yeah yeah and i liked how he, i liked how he portrayed it ish but yeah. i also love paul paul newman his i dad. know he did really good i enjoyed yeah. watching him yeah and i don't think i could handle Teresa again in the book so robin thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i must st- i'll still go book but it's good. like good job uh, but it's a rough one, yeah. Yeah, super, yeah. like, I would not enjoy myself. Yeah. No, the whole time. But then I kept, like, getting pissed at the movie while I was right. talking. And then I was like, okay, but at the end of the day, I would much rather just sit and watch that than sit and read it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Even though, how much you want to bet, I'm going to forget that I read it again. So then I can go into this book over and over again. <laughs> like, it's a brand new book and forget like, that I read it. It's like the Men in Black, like, <laughs> memory thing. <laughs> For real. Every though. time you open the book, it blinks Whoa. at you. <laughs> New book. Exciting. <laughs> and then I get to the end. What? I hated this. <laughs> Why can't I remember that I read it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, All right. Sneak. I will sneak. let you do this. I'm so freaking excited. First off, we've got a Wednesday mini-sode. So stick around for that. Mm-hmm. But guys, we're fucking finally here. <laughs> I get to talk about Rob. I get to talk about Twilight. I get to... Ah, I'm so freaking excited. Ah, I can't wait to find out who your favorite characters are. I hope you like Emmett. Ah. My mom said that she's so excited for me because it goes into detail about the Cullen family because she loves the Cullen family. The Cullen family is the... I wish the movies did that. Emmett's not in it enough. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm excited. I love Emmett. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why Breaking Dawn Part Two is my favorite. Is Emmett's in it a lot. He's not in it a lot, but his like one of his key scenes from the book that I absolutely love is in the movie. Oh, that's good. And yeah, I oh my god, I cannot wait. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> I this is gonna be an, like five hour podcast. I'm gonna be I like, know. okay, Brie, what's next? We got to keep going. Let's go. <laughs> well, uh, no more stories. <laughs> I guess I'll tell you guys today because i can because it's next week i have decided that i'm going to read twilight and midnight sun next to each other and so basically you're going to be getting like two books in one comparison but well, also we're going to try to break that into a mini so that i don't take 10 hours to explain it yes we'll try 
I'm ready Good to luck. be confused. They're about to be like four hours long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just me talking all about the character. I'm her. so excited. I also, Allie thinks she's going to be Team Jacob. I hope not. The, her reasoning behind it, I don't think it's going to be how she thinks. Okay. Well, that's why I'm interested to read it and find mm-hmm. out. So my reasoning is I always shoot for the, you know, the childhood friend. Like the, mm-hmm. they've been friend right? Am I right? That they've been friends for They've ever? known each other. Oh, okay. They haven't been friends. Oh, see. Right then yeah. and there. It's already. Might yeah. be wrong. Yeah. But in the movie, that's were why. they friends? No. Oh, I haven't seen the movie in years, so that's no. probably why. <laughs> Their friendship kicks into gear in new moon that's why i'm like i don't think you'll be okay. team jacob but well let's, you might be let's see do you like werewolves or vampires <laughs> gosh <laughs> but every vampire is damn <laughs> i'm so excited uh, i can't talk about rob <laughs> are you guys ready look at that sneak peek gave me quite a bit no <laughs> Stay tuned. I know you're on the edge of your seat. Can't wait. If we lose any people over this, I'm going to be so sad. Maybe our mini-sode this Wednesday will just be you excitedly talking about what oh, we're hell yeah. preparing for for Twilight. <laughs> Highly possible. But I like this plan. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. We don't know yet. Stay tuned. Yes. All right, you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed, rate, and reviewed. You can also follow us on Facebook at Offscript, Instagram at Offscript Podcast 21, and TikTok at Offscript underscore pod. Shoutouts to Madam Ashen Creations for our adorable logo art. And Adam Daniel for our incredible theme song. And to Creative Cinephile Productions for producing our podcast. See you next time. time.